Mr. Skinner. Good afternoon, Chairman Towns. Good afternoon, Chairman Towns, uh, Ranking, Ranking Member Belbray, and members of the subcommittee. It's a pleasure to be here. There are several points I would like to make today. The first deals with acquisition resources. It should not come as no great surprise to anyone that there is an acquisition management crisis within the federal government today. The problem is not a new one. For the past decade, acquisition management capabilities have been downsizing while the procurement workload was on the rise. Procurement spending in the federal government has more than doubled in just the past six years alone from $203 billion to $412 billion. I also think it's important to note that when the Department of Homeland Security was created, it was shortchanged. On one side of the ledger, it acquired the entire operational assets and programs of 22 desperate agencies, as well as a litany of new programs and operations. Yet, on the other side of the ledger, it did not acquire a proportionate share of the acquisition management assets needed to support those programs and operations. DH contract spending has tripled over the past three years from $3.4 billion to $15.8 billion. DHS is now the largest, third largest user of contractors in the federal government after the Departments of Defense and Energy. Yet, while its contract spending has grown significantly, its ability to manage those contracts has been unable to keep pace. My second point deals with the dominant influence of expediency over substance. That is, schedule concerns trump performance concerns. Like many other federal agencies, the Department of Homeland Security is in a catch-22 situation. The urgency of its mission demands rapid pursuit of major investments programs. Expediting contracts, however, limits the time available for adequate procurement planning in development of technical requirements, acceptance criteria, and performance measures. Without the basic provisions that specify precisely the expected outcomes and performance measures, the government has no basis to assert that a contractor failed to perform, and thus no basis to pursue suspension and debarment or other remedies to protect the taxpayer in future procurements. The government must lay the groundwork from the very beginning of the acquisition process, not after millions have been spent with little or nothing to show for it. My final point deals with the contracting vehicles being employed today to procure government goods and services. The Department of Homeland Security, like many, many federal agencies, has become increasingly reliant on risky contract types that can be easily abused unless properly managed. These contracting vehicles, such as the performance-based contracts, indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity, IDIQ contracts, and time and material contracts, should only be used in limited circumstances, fully justified, and only when an agency's acquisition infrastructure is in place to provide sufficient oversight. Before I close my statement, Mr. Chairman, I would like to say a few words about contractor performance information and the ability of agencies to share and access such information. For many years, the federal government has pursued databases that contain contractor performance information and provide easy access to agencies planning to award new contracts. In fact, several systems with varying levels of functionality exist today. Nevertheless, we do not have a single system that includes all relevant information. For example, consent decrees, negotiated settlements, reports of investigation, audit reports, and state government information are not readily available in these systems. I currently co-chair the Legislative Committee of the National Procurement Fraud Task Force with Brian Miller, the Inspector General at GSA. The Justice Department initiated this effort last fall to focus the resources and talents of U.S. attorneys, inspector generals, and other parts of the government on fighting procurement fraud. Our legislative committee is looking at what statutory changes would be needed to strengthen the tools to prevent, detect, and remedy misconduct in federal contracts. One proposal we are explore, exploring would address the issue of collecting and sharing contractor performance information. I understand, Congressman Maloney, that you have introduced legislation just this past Friday that's co-sponsored by uh, with uh, uh, the Chairman Towns. Uh, the, I applaud you for that initiative, and, and our legislative committee looks forward to working with you and uh, uh, exploring ways that we can improve uh, information sharing in, in the government on procurement operations. 
In summary, uh, DHS and the federal government can be can do a better job of protecting public interest in major acquisitions. The long run solutions include strong program and procurement offices, clearly articulated program goals, defined program technical requirements, performance measures, and acceptance terms, well structured contacts, and long and thorough cost and performance oversight. In the near term, DHS can mitigate risk and limit government's exposure to such actions as writing shorter term contracts with smaller incremental tasks, using contract vehicles that better share risk between government and the vendor, and ensuring that the government retains the negotiating power with decision points and options. Mr. Chairman, this concludes my remarks. I'll be happy to answer any questions you or the committee may have.